Hey guys, this is Debarshi. This video will be a little different. It's actually about me, and I reveal a lot of stuff about my life that is private in nature. So if you don't want to listen to this, just shut it off, you know? You guys deserve to know what I am going through right now, and you guys deserve to know why I struggle to make these videos so often. So without further ado, here it goes. I think it's important to understand why I created this channel in the first place. For some YouTubers, it's as simple as, oh, I like tech. But for me, it was really different. I really wanted to help people. I have a passion for technology. I thought that I could cultivate that passion into something more. So it really came out from a heart of wanting to help people. That's a very noble thing. But it's hard to help other people when you can't help yourself. As many of you may have seen, through my first few videos, I did not refer to myself by my actual name, Debarshi. I referred to myself as Ben Cat. Well, this term, Ben Cat, was actually a concatenation of two of the people that I really cared about in my life. One of them named Ben, another named Kathy. I really didn't value myself nearly as much as I valued these people. Because of this, I named the channel after them. My real name is Debarshi Kundu. I go by that name now because I've realized that it's healthier for my self-esteem. This is the name that I was given by my parents. It is what I respect. It's a very unique name. I mean, how many people do you hear called Debarshi? I've really been contemplating changing the name of this channel for that reason. My inability to name this channel initially after myself, it represents one of my biggest flaws, which is that I consistently doubt myself. I don't believe I'm intelligent enough, consistently think that I am less capable than many of my peers. I have autism and ADHD. Many people think that those are diseases, but the reality is they are not. Autism and ADHD are some of the biggest gifts that I have been given. My brain is wired in a certain way that is very different than most other students. It is a gift, but at the same time, it can also feel like a curse. When I was in middle school and high school, I really struggled to fit in. When I got into high school, I really struggled a lot with my peers. I would ask to join in hangouts. They would say that they were cool with it, and then they would ignore me for a long time period of time. These kind of issues led to serious arguments where I also handled the situation very inappropriately. I threatened suicide, attempted suicide on a couple of occasions. I really tried to get attention for myself. I felt I was not being given enough attention. I, I felt that people were really just ignoring me and I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be accepted by my peers. As a student, I struggled so much. Not only did the students treat me like crap, but also the adults, particularly the school administration, they did not do a great job handling my situation as well. In some cases, they actually called in some of my peers and recommended that they stay away from me. So here I was as a student getting ostracized already. But instead of the adults, you know, standing up and saying something about it and encouraging other students to be more accepting of me and my condition, they encouraged it. And I think this was a form of fear mongering. I have slowly been able to understand a little bit of their perspective. Obviously, you know, I was a kid who was threatening suicide. There were behaviors at home that I haven't really spoken about, but all of this gives up this fake stereotype that, you know, I'm a bad kid. And I think that on that basis, how I was threatening suicide and whatnot, the school administration became very scared and they handled the situation very inappropriately. I would get called into the principal's office for various things, various social conflicts. I was never violent in school. However, I always felt like everyone treated me as a threat. That angered me greatly. I had students that would gaslight me, would say that they would hang out with me, they would ignore me for long periods of time, and then they would really get away with it because when I got upset, 
I was the one who was basically balked at by the administration and not those students. I also struggled to have my gifts acknowledged as well as some of my weaknesses because I was a special needs student, but at the same time, I was a gifted student as well. And that puts you in a very peculiar position you don't want to be in. You're what you call a twice exceptional student. My gifts were not really given the full attention, at least I believe, that they deserved. At the same time, my weaknesses, my flaws, my social struggles were not dealt with properly either. So I was basically treated like I was average. I'm kind of like just in the middle ground. And this is a case with a lot of autistic students, a lot of students who are what we call twice exceptional, who are very gifted, but they struggle to fit in. I, I dealt with the anger, the pain, the frustration, and this has led to a depression, a strong depression. I have fought this depression in several ways. One of my primary ways is I have become more involved in Christ. I have become part of a ministry, a student ministry known as Epic here at the University of Texas at Austin. And I've really just tried to go out of my way to be an inspiration for others. And that's what I hope I will be someday. I want to help people. The second way that I've, I've really just uh, tried to recover from this incessant pain and trauma is by creating videos like this. It's part of the reason I created this channel, right? because in doing so, I am helping other people and I'm also cultivating my passions into something more, something useful for society. Just because I created this channel for that intention though, does not mean that I don't still struggle with the pain, the anger, and really just the coping of being left out. Many of the issues that I faced in high school has followed me over to the University of Texas. And let me explain why. In high school, as I mentioned, there are a lot of people who excluded and ostracized me. I have to deal with the memories of that and I have to deal with the memories of the fact that adults sat there and really they knew about it, but they didn't really do anything. If anything, they just kind of blamed me for it. Blame, and it, I just kind of felt like, well, because I am the way that I am. And, you know, I, I do struggle with behaving and expressing my feelings in a proper manner. But because of that, I felt like I was judged as a person. Our school system is not great with dealing with autism. Just period. So I have to deal with that, but then I also have to deal with trying to fit in here at the University of Texas. It has not been an easy ride. To be fair, when you're at the university level, your autonomy is acknowledged. As a student in high school, my autonomy was definitely not acknowledged. I had a monitor following me around everywhere, and I love that monitor. He was an amazing person, but the fact that the school felt that you know, I wasn't capable enough to handle myself. It goes on with that uh, special education stereotype that you know I'm just less capable. I'm a threat. You know, it just kind of gives you with that. I gives you that idea, and you have to cope with that. I still cope with that. So the autonomy aspect of being at a university is great. The issues come when you can't separate your past from your present for two years. I didn't even want to stay at this university. I wanted to transfer out. I wanted to go be with one of the only friends that I had in high school that abandoned me after I became too overbearing and too reliant on her. And I will admit, I have my faults. I yelled at her a lot. And the school administration, I feel, didn't handle the situation well either. They actually tried to implement a stay away contract between her and myself. So I have that emotional pain and trauma of knowing that I had already been ostracized by so many people and the adults knew that. But in spite of that, they chose to implement such a drastic document, such a drastic plan that didn't really, at the end of the day, heal things. It actually just managed to tear things even more apart. When I came to the University of Texas, I was like, I'm going to make up with her. And her name is Kathy, by the way. She is the latter half of the name of this channel. 
I just thought I was gonna make up with Kathy. That's what I'm gonna do. I became consumed with this idea. I started looking at her Instagram, asking people about it. Is she with a guy? It consumed me. I was paranoid. I was anxious. I was depressed and I could not focus on my classes. Everything just became about Kathy, 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 Kathy. That distanced people at the University of Texas away from me. Slowly, I have been able to get myself under control in that aspect. I've talked a lot less about Kathy. I've kind of been able to find a middle ground where I deal with those past issues, but at the same time, am able to really care about the people in the present. However, I'd be lying if I said that it's been easy. In fact, there's so many people that I care about now here at UT in my ministry. I struggle to get along with. They think I'm weird. They think I'm unusual. They don't really give me much of a chance. So it's been very difficult to have to deal with these past memories and at the same time reconcile them with the way certain people treat me at the University of Texas. I found a small friend group. I'm thankful to God for that. There still is the burdens of those past memories, how I've been treated by those people that have uh, just abandoned me, that have made it normal to abandon me. The burden of past actions that I've committed, you know, because I'm, I haven't necessarily been a perfect kid. I was a good kid, just not a perfect kid. I struggled a lot with my own behaviors and voicing my emotions properly. Dealing with those past memories and also having that trauma of, wait, is this going to happen again? Am I going to get excluded from something again? All of these struggles in hindsight, all of these pains and suffering has built me up into what I am today. Cultivated me into someone that tries to fight for students like myself. Every action that I make, I think, what could I do that reflects as something that I want other autistic students or other students with ADHD to be encouraged by. It's also part of the reason that I decided to take up teaching certification in addition to my computer science curriculum. Thankfully, I've been able to find hobbies like creating YouTube videos and doing photography. I enjoy making videos. I'd be lying if I said that I don't enjoy making videos. I love tech. I watch tech videos religiously. More recently, I have been captivated by content creation. Uh, I, I really look forward to expanding my career within the YouTube space. Trying to make these videos, however, drains a lot of my energy. I have to be in a position where I can make the best videos that I think are possible. My goal has always been every video that I make, I will progressively get better. But that takes practice. Practice takes time, it takes energy. And when you are dealing with so much in your life, when you are so depressed, you don't have that energy. The reason why I have not dedicated so much effort into YouTube, I haven't felt like I have the full energy to do so. And when I don't have the full energy to do so, I automatically decide, no, I'm not gonna do this. I don't want to create half-ass YouTube videos. I wanna create content that my viewers are gonna enjoy. I wanna create content that's gonna help other people, that's gonna connect with people. Which is funny, it's really one of my biggest difficulties, one of my quirks. I struggle with connecting with people. Contrary to what society might believe, autistic students are some of the most passionate, most loving, most caring individuals that you will ever meet. They really do care about other people and how they feel. It's just that we think differently. If society is able to get out of its little bubble, this crammed, coined up idea of a social norm, we may feel more accepted. And at the same time, we may be more encouraged to try to understand other people as well. That's gonna be it for this one, guys. If you know someone with ADHD or autism, I just encourage you to really reach out to them and be friendly with them and be patient because I know that people are different and sometimes I might come off as annoying to certain people. We should 
be open arms of people, and we should really just encourage society to be pushed into a more accepting and understanding and loving position, especially towards individuals like myself with autism and ADHD. If you have autism, ADHD, or some other condition, I just want you to know how much God loves you just the way you are and how incredible you are as an individual. Don't ever doubt that because I have spent my entire life doubting that. I hope that you guys like this video. I will see you in the next one. Peace.